Are you thinking about selling your home, but you want to cut back on some of the expenses? I'm going to show you how to sell your house by yourself right after this. My name is Karen Jackson. I'm a residential real estate agent with John L. Scott in Renton, Washington and the surrounding areas. I have been working with buyers and sellers since 2004 and I have seen the ups and the downs and just about every market condition out there. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please go and subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications. You will then be notified of any of my upcoming videos. I put out new videos every Wednesday and you will learn lots of great tips on real estate. Selling your house by yourself can be done, but it can be challenging. So I want to make sure I go over all the important steps you need to take in order to sell your house by yourself. I want to make sure you're educated and knowledgeable before you make that decision. One of the very first things you need to do is to get your home staged and ready for sale. Now this includes the interior and the exterior. Much of the staging can be done by yourself, but sometimes you may need to hire a professional to help you. You will want to declutter and remove any items that you don't use on a daily basis. You have to pack to move anyway, so you may as well do it now. You will want to remove any family photos that are hanging on the walls or on the shelves, and you may need to paint after that. Some of you may need to get some new curtains or comforters to freshen things up, and you will want to make sure the house is sparkly clean on the first day of showing. In some situations, you may need to hire a stager. Next, you want to make sure you fill out all the disclosure forms that are required to sell a home in Washington State. You will need to have these available for the buyers. This is for you to disclose all material facts for your future protection. Market value pricing. Your best chance to get the highest price for your home is within the first 30 days. So you want to make sure that you price your home at market value. You want to be careful you don't fall into the trap of listing high and then you can go down from there. Oftentimes you end up getting less than market value when you use this strategy. The buyer's perception of your home goes down the longer it sits on the market. You also want to be careful of pricing exactly with Zillow or any other automated valuation site. These typically are not 100% accurate and oftentimes are very high or very low. Next, you want to put your valuables away and out of sight. This includes guns, jewelry, medicine. You also may want a tracking system for buyers in your house. You will be letting strangers into your home. There are a lot of lurkers out there looking for the perfect opportunity to steal items. When your home is listed, a buyer can only access your home with a licensed real estate agent. Once that agent enters your home, it is tracked on the electronic key box. So you have a tracking of who's coming and going. Also, most agents don't take a buyer to show a house unless they have a pre-approval letter with a lender, which means they've gone through a process of showing financials and ID. There are a lot of scams out there, so be careful. Flexible schedule. You will need a flexible schedule for showing homes. Buyers don't all come on the same day or at the same time. You can try to allocate one day where most of the buyers can come, but they can't all come on the weekends. Some have to come in the evenings, some come early in the mornings. So you have to be available to let those buyers in, or you may lose out. In this market, we can't have open houses, or you're not supposed to. So having one day for all the buyers to come in is not as feasible right now. Sometimes you will have people come in at 9 a.m. on a Sunday, or 8 p.m. on a Saturday, or 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. You have to be available and flexible to be able to let those buyers in. Sure, you can just have one day available for buyers to come through, but you may only get one buyer that day. You want to create an urgency so that more buyers come and there's a competition so that you can get the best offer with the best terms. Sometimes terms are just as important or more important than the price you get. Once you get an offer, you will want to qualify all buyers. Not all buyers who write an offer are able to actually close on your home. Some buyers will have a pre-qualification letter, and then once they get into underwriting with the lender, they've not told 100% accurate information, and that loan won't close. So you want to make sure you're asking the right questions so that you know you have a strong offer 
with a strong potential to get a loan closed. Now that you have an offer, you need to get the home closed. Sometimes that is the hardest part. Getting an offer is sometimes the easiest part. You will have to go through an inspection period most likely. Many buyers will ask for the world on an inspection. They'll ask for the tiniest little things and then others ask for more major items. You need to know how to respond and within what timeline. It is super important. You also will need to be able to negotiate the appraisal. If the appraiser cannot find comparables to match your price, they sometimes will ask the real estate agent for some help with that. Sometimes it is very hard to find comparables because we don't have a lot of inventory on the market. And an appraiser will sometimes reach out to their listing agent to try to find how they came up with the price. You will need to make sure you're very market savvy and know what comparables are available for your home at the price you have it sold at. You can watch my videos on what is an inspection contingency and what is an appraisal contingency, and that will help you through it a little bit more. Is your home on septic? If your home is on septic, you will need to have it pumped and have a monitoring and performance inspection done, as well as have an as-built drawn if there's not an as-built already. And lastly, you will need to know the answers to the most commonly asked questions by buyers and the legal papers for a purchase and sale agreement. As a real estate agent, we spend lots of time learning the legalities of a purchase and sale agreement. And you are doing all of this while you are packing and getting ready to move to your new home. Before you sell your house by yourself, make sure you know the legal and financial risks of selling your home by owner. You have a higher potential for risks and mistakes and legal issues can cost you a lot of money. A great majority of people who sell their homes by owner put less money in their pockets than they would if they used a real estate agent. So just be sure to educate yourself. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, please comment below or send me a message. I would be happy to help you through this.